Excuse me. I had to get up and get a book. I had gotten up earlier and I set my uh, ELW over on the couch and it's got the uh, liturgy for our evening vespers. Which, by the way, welcome to uh, evening vespers on this, the uh, 27th of uh, December. Getting close to the end of the year. I guess I noticed it was snowing out. I looked out. Some would say, well, didn't you know it was going to snow? Well, you know, I don't watch that much of the news and stuff. And really, it is December. And it's probably going to snow quite often. And I really don't pay attention unless it matters to me. Whether I've got something planned outside or whether I'm going somewhere, then I'm going to look to see whether it's going to snow or not. But it makes no difference to me. I've got enough on my mind, the things that do make a difference, that I don't need to be worried about those things that don't make a difference. I guess that's what Paul calls contentment. Uh, you don't have to know everything. You need to know what you need to know. Uh, so I didn't need to know it was snowing, but since I looked out, I saw it was snowing. And yeah, it's not too bad looking. I guess it's done. But it's good to have you here. Uh, I see it says we have three people here. I don't know who's here because it's small. You're up you're up here in a sparkly Christmas tree. Uh, Christmas tree. Lisa's tree is behind me and uh, it'll probably be up next Sunday when we do evening vespers also. So uh, that's okay. You'll see it again probably. It is a beautiful tree. I love it. But I'm sitting in the corner uh, where we used to do devotions in March, April, May, and uh, into June, even uh, we would do our uh, Sunday worship from from this uh, position right here, except we were turned around the other way. Behind me, or in front of me, this way, is the wall that the Louis cross hung, and the sign that said uh, Micah 6 8. So, uh, give you a little tour of this area. It's good to have you here. Carol's here. Hi, Carol. How are you? And Elaine is here. And uh, Terry is here. So, uh, great. Good to have you all here this evening. Uh, of course, we're doing evening vespers. And if you have an ELW handy, uh, our, uh, our uh, responsive litany has changed because we are no longer in Advent. We are in Christmas season. So uh, that will be on page 310. But uh, I'll have to read those responses because not all of you will have your ELWs available. Uh, just a heads up. Uh, I'm uh, after this evening's devotion. I'm going to take a little staycation, uh, so there'll be no devotions this week. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to do devotions. I have the portals of prayer. Both Lisa and I have that, and we do devotions out of that. And I have other devotion books, and I will continue to read. And I encourage you to do your daily devotions also. and uh, But we won't be doing them together online. So uh, just a heads up that I'm just going to take a little time off to kind of do things around the house and relax and read and get ready for the new year. Uh, it's coming upon us here soon. So, uh, But uh, I will be in church on Sunday and I already sent the bulletin off. Uh, to Nancy, and uh, we will uh, have our regular 
Sunday worship with Holy Communion this coming Sunday, January 3rd. And in the evening, we'll have our evening Vespers again. So uh, I guess we'll get started. If you'd like to turn to page 309 where we start, or just 310 where our litter our responsive liturgy prayer is. But we gather together here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here's our litany. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we be, have beheld Christ's glory. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Oh, I need to be retrained. We forgot the opening singing liturgy. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all, help us to pause and wonder with delight at all you have made. Open our hearts to see the evidence of your presence and your salvation and all that surrounds us. Amen. And now I have to get up and go get my Bible because I was going to read something. Oh, it's right here. You have to fire me because... Uh, I uh, seem to be all mixed up here this evening. I uh, guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. We're not always right on point. What I'm going to read is from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61. But first I'm going to talk about our devotions for this week. The devotions that you're going to do on your own, like you probably do anyways, I hope, and I'm going to do on my own. You see, tonight it's good news to the poor, and tomorrow night it is he, he heals the brokenhearted, and Tuesday is freedom for the captives, and Wednesday is comfort for those who mourn, and Thursday is hope for the future. All of those revolve around, and I hope you recognize those because I think they were our readings, uh, from Isaiah chapter 61. And they're the readings that Jesus read after he was baptized and he went back to Nazareth, his hometown, and read these verses from Isaiah in the synagogue. Hometown boy come back to preach. Woo-wee, I bet you they had a lot of people there. And Jesus then said, Today you have seen the scripture fulfilled. He was talking about himself. The one who it says, the Spirit has called me and anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And I'm going to read that right now to you. Uh, 
if I may. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring me good news to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress, a garland instead of ashes, an oil of gladness instead of mourning, the, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. Well, says then Jesus closed the book and said, Today you've seen these prophecies fulfilled. These prophecies apply to Jesus. He said so. All these things were proclaiming 700, 500 years earlier that the son of David would come. And this is who he would be, the anointed one. Anointed in Greek is Christos, Christ. So when we say Christ, we say Jesus, the Christ, Jesus, the anointed one, the one who is anointed, the one who is chosen by God. So this applies to Jesus. And you know what? Since we, we are all the church, we are the body of Christ on earth. Christ rose into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he left his apostles. And he left us now to be the body of Christ on earth. To be his representative. And like it or not, all these sentences, all these attributes apply to us. That's what we accept when we say that we are Christians, that we are the church. We preach good news to the poor. Christmas time is especially hard on the poor. Our church has been generous for many years with the youth the Sunday school kids buying toys for the program here in Princeton. Christmas for Kids Toy Drive. It's a little different this year, but it was nonetheless successful in giving presents to children who weren't able to afford one themselves. And also the LYO, our high school youth, go out with their own monies that they've raised and purchase for a number of families, in the, especially in the Ohio area, where our church is. That's what the good news to the poor is, that here comes a Christian, here comes a little Christ to bring something to us that we can't afford. That's why it's so terrible. Uh, breaks our hearts that we can't give in the uh, fish fry and give in the Thanksgiving dinner that we do. But that will come sometime again. And since we are the church, we are to heal up the brokenhearted. We are to reach out to those in need. Our prayer ministry, our care and concern, our card ministry that sends out cards to everybody on our prayer list and it's a huge prayer list has healed those who are broken hearted, those who are lonely and those who are sick it says that we are to uh, be freedom for the captives for those who are captive but we also have to look at our own lives because we are all captive. We profess that we are all in bondage. We're all captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We're broken. And guess what? 
it's a good thing that we're broken. Because then God can fix us. See, remember in Isaiah, he talks about God being the potter. We are the clay and you, O oh Lord, are the potter. And he molds us into his shape. And sometimes we get so hard that we can't be molded. And the only way to remold us into the shape of Christ is to break us, to shatter us, re-wet us with the waters of our baptism, and then spin that wheel and form us up again. We are to comfort those who mourn. Yes, we've had much mourning in our church with so many deaths. And it hurts our heart and it drags our hearts. But you know what? That prepares us for going out into the world and helping others. Because those things, those have happened to us. We have had cancer. We have lost loved ones. And because of that, we can better relate to others who have cancer. And to others who have lost loved ones. To stand beside them. And know that sometimes words aren't going to help. Many times, words don't help. But just being there helps. Being a presence. Being the presence of Christ in their lives. And being an ear to listen rather than to fix. Comfort those who mourn. And our last one on New Year's Eve. Will we or celebrating. That's a, one of those blowy things in case you don't recognize my terrible uh, impersonation. But uh, hope for the future. We certainly are looking for a new year with the hope for something better next year. We're always looking for better but we should also always be looking for what God has in store for us. And though we hope for better things in our lives, we also should hope for the future of justice and mercy for those who don't see justice, for those who don't see mercy. Like I said, to do a good job of being a Christ to others. We need to embrace those things. We need to believe that this is speaking to us. And these are our attributes. And it might not be easy to embrace these attributes, these things. It's not always what we want for our lives. It might require sacrifice. But as we head into the new year, we hope for a better 2020. And we hope to be able to redefine what better means. Better for those who don't know Christ. So that they would find the peace, the peace that passes all understanding with Christ in their hearts next year. Eternal Father, thank you for the blessings of the year that is coming past. We ask you to be our guide in the year to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, oh, people of God, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gifts. We thank you especially uh, for your gift of Jesus Christ, who leads us, who guides us, who strengthens us, and who sends us into the world to do that which he did in his life. Because he has told us, as his disciples, as his followers, that with the Holy Spirit in us, and the multitude of us on earth, that we will do greater things than he had done in his three years. 
Help us to show all peoples that salvation lies in your Son alone. Now, as you've called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown, give us faith to go out with courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Ah, amen. Let us pray Luther's evening prayer. I give you thanks, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Now, crawl under those covers, go to sleep, start your day, start your week off on the right foot, giving praise and thanks to God for all he has given you. God gives you those great gifts because God loves you, and so do I. Good night, and we will see you Sunday morning at 930